हेलो टुडे वी विल सी चैप्टर थ्री विच इज केमिकल थर्मोडाइनमिक्स एंड एनर्जेटिक्स दे आर डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स ऑफ एनर्जी लाइक काइनेटिक एनर्जी पोटेंशियल एनर्जी हीट एनर्जी एक्सेट्रा नाउ दीज फॉर्म्स ऑफ एनर्जी आर इंटर कन्वर्टेबल एंड दीज फॉर्म्स ऑफ एनर्जी कैन बी कन्वर्टेड फ्रॉम वन फॉर्म टू अनादर बट वन इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट इज दैट एनर्जी कैन नाइदर बी क्रिएटेड नॉर बी डिस्ट्रॉयड दे कैन बी जस्ट कन्वर्टेड फ्रॉम वन फॉर्म टू अनादर नाउ वॉट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ थर्मोडाइनमिक्स थर्मोडाइनमिक्स इज द ब्रांच ऑफ साइंस वेर वी डील विद एनर्जी एंड द डिफरेंट रिलेशनशिप्स बिटवीन दीज एनर्जी फॉर्म्स नाउ लेट इज लुक एट वॉट आर द बेसिक प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ थर्मोडाइनमिक्स टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट वी हैव टू फर्स्ट लुक एट वॉट इज अ सिस्टम एंड वॉट इज अ सराउंडिंग नाउ द होल यूनिवर्स इज डिवाइडेड इन टू सिस्टम एंड सराउंड सिस्टम इज दैट पार्ट ऑफ द यूनिवर्स विच इज यूज फॉर स्टडी ऑफ थर्मोडाइनमिक प्रॉपर्टीज एंड सराउंडिंग इज द लेफ्ट ओवर पार्ट ऑफ यूनिवर्स विच इज यूज फॉर ऑब्जर्वेशन लेट इज लुक एट टाइप्स ऑफ सिस्टम सिस्टम्स आर डिवाइड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ ट्रांसफर ऑफ एनर्जी एंड मैटर ना दे आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ सिस्टम्स ओपन सिस्टम क्लोज सिस्टम एंड आइसोलेटेड सिस्टम अ सिस्टम वेर यू कैन एक्सचेंज मैटर एज वेल एज एनर्जी इज कॉल्ड एज ओपन सिस्टम नाउ एन एग्जाम्पल इज अ कप ऑफ टी वेर इन एज यू कैन सी the vapor which is coming out of the tea can be exchanged with the surrounding and similarly the tea is hot after some time we see that the tea becomes cold why because all the heat energy in the tea is actually given out to the surrounding so which is heat energy is given out to the surrounding so a system wherein both transfer of energy and matter can be done is called as an open system the second part closed system in a closed system we can only transfer the energy whereas matter cannot be transferred with the surrounding so here an example is a cup of tea with saucer as a lid on the top so as we can see here the vapor coming out from the tea cannot be exchanged with the surrounding but the heat energy of the tea can be exchanged with the surrounding because even if it is covered up it is after some time it is going to become cold why because all the heat energy is given out to the surroundings so that type is called as closed system wherein energy can be exchanged with the surrounding but matter cannot be exchanged with the surroundings and the third part which is isolated system in a isolated system is a system where in neither matter nor energy can be exchanged with the surrounding here an example is a thermos as we all know that neither energy can be transferred nor matter can be transferred why because we all know if we keep tea in the thermos the thermos will maintain the heat energy as it is it will keep the tea hot itself the energy is not going to be dissipated to the surrounding and this kind of system is called as isolated system and here not not even energy neither matter can be exchanged with the surrounding let us look at the first law of thermodynamics first law of thermodynamics is nothing but the law of conservation of energy now this law has been stated in many different ways but the meaning of all these statements is the same let us look at the first law of thermodynamics the first law is nothing but law of conservation of energy now this law has been stated in many different ways let us look at some statements of this law the first statement total energy of an isolated system remains constant another way in which this law has been defined is that energy can be converted from one form to another but energy cannot be created or it cannot be destroyed now let us move on to the next point 
mathematical equation of first law of thermodynamics now energy can be transferred to the system in two different ways by heat or by work so if we apply heat to a particular system or we perform some kind of work on the system the energy of the system is going to change for example if we provide some amount of heat to the system or we do some kind of work to the system the internal energy of that system is obviously going to increase whereas if we take out some heat from the system to the surrounding or some kind of work is done from the system on the surrounding what is going to happen the internal energy of the system is going to decrease now let us look at this particular example wherein increase in the system's internal energy why increase in the system's internal energy because quantity of heat is applied to the system and that quantity of heat which is applied to the system is q similarly some amount of work is done on the system and that amount of work which is done on system is represented by w and this particular addition is going to give the change in the internal energy of the system which is represented by del u now modified law of thermodynamics modified law of thermodynamics states that energy and mass are equivalent and they are related to each other now this a uh, modified law is represented by einstein's equation which is e is equal to mc square wherein e is the equivalent of mass and c is the velocity of light let us look at second law of thermodynamics it states that heat energy cannot be completely converted into equivalent amount of work the other way in which we can state the second law of thermodynamics is that efficiency cannot be unity let us try to understand this with the help of an example we all know that our vehicles run on fuel but never this fuel is 100% converted into the work done always some part of the energy is wasted in the form of heat and that is the reason why the ratio of work done to the fuel fed is never unity another way in which this second law of thermodynamics has been stated is that spontaneous flow of heat energy is always unidirectional it flows from higher temperature to lower temperature let's now look at the third law of thermodynamics but before we understand third law of thermodynamics we need to understand a very important concept which is entropy now entropy is a thermodynamic property which is related to the spontaneity of a particular process now let us understand this with the help of an example here as we can see in the example we have water which is in the solid state and when we have water in solid state it is called as ice cube obviously we all know that now the water molecules are all placed together properly in an ordered manner and here we can see all the molecules are placed in a particular order and they are well structured and that is why we can say that the entropy is minimum or zero now when particular heat amount of heat is provided to this ice it is going to melt down to water and it is going to go into the liquid state when it goes into the liquid state the molecules of water will become more disordered so a ordered structure will become more disordered all the water molecules are now free to move here and there but in but into a particular region itself on further providing heat to these water molecules they will vaporize to gaseous water molecules and that we can see here 
the molecules are now free to move here and there randomly to whatever amount of space is available. So, a disordered system has now become a highly disordered system as we can see here in the gaseous state. So, the more the disordered system is the more entropy we have and the less the system is disordered or we can say the more it is ordered entropy is minimum or in some cases it is also zero. Now that we have understood the concept of entropy let us look at what the third law of thermodynamics states. It states that entropy of a perfectly ordered crystalline substance is zero at absolute zero temperature. Now this third law of thermodynamics is used for determining the entropy of any substance may be in solid state, liquid state or gaseous state at a particular temperature. Now let us try to understand this with the help of equations. We can see that at T equal to 0 that is temperature equal to 0, a perfectly ordered crystalline structure has entropy which is determined by S is equal to 0. Now when the temperature of this substance is increased from 0 to a particular temperature T, the substance will become disorderly and that is the re reason why the entropy will now increase from entropy at S0 that is temperature 0 to entropy at ST that is temperature T which is S determined by ST. Now this change in entropy is said to be delta S which is ST that is entropy at temperature T minus S0 that is entropy at temperature 0. But as we know that entropy of any substance at absolute 0 temperature is 0 that is why the entropy at 0 temperature would be 0. And that is why the change in entropy on increase of temperature would be ST that is entropy at temperature T. Let us look at some common definitions which are related to thermodynamics. The first definition of energy. Energy is defined as the capacity to do work. Now energy can be in different forms such as kinetic energy, potential energy, heat energy etc. All these forms of energies are interconvertible. Now let us move on to the next definition which is of work. Work can be defined as distance multiplied by the force which actually causes the motion. Now the next definition is of heat. Heat is nothing but it is another form of energy. It is a way in which a system can exchange energy with its surroundings. When the surrounding and the system are at different temperatures, heat either flows in the system or it flows out of the system.